Hello everyone, my name is Joe Scorson, channel is called Ethernet Wink, and today's video we're going to be making an async Whataburk web app kind of thing in Python. Uh, we're going to be using Quart because if you guys recall in that last video I made about how to get started in quantitative finance, I mentioned async is something super important. Async is something that I think that everybody, every programmer who wants to be useful for a long time, I think that uh, I think that we should get really good at async. We think that we should understand how to do it, how to use it, right? So we're going to be doing something super fun, super simple in the order book side of it, but we're going to do, be doing some web sockets and a little bit of front end. Um, yeah, and we're going to do it as a code along style thing. Before we hop into it, blow up my business Twitter. I just removed so many bot followers, so get me back up there. I'd like to see it in 550, I mean, but um, check out the indicator. I have in collaboration with Lux Algo. Links to all the stuff will be in the description. I have more videos like this on my about this on my channel. I back tested it in a prior video. Check out my personal Twitter as well if you want to hear me yap and just see a lot of retweets and just a lot of funny stuff like this. Um, yeah, so let's hop into this. So what we're going to be doing is coding the order book in the main, and then I'm just going to go over this uh, front end right here because I have no desire to code front end. I'll be real with you. So we're going to be doing the order book first, and I do have a reference next to me in case you see me looking over, but I want to kind of go through um, coding this relatively quickly. Um, because this isn't the whole point of the video, so I'm just going to try to uh, get through here pretty, pretty quickly. Uh, and just and not stumble over my words too much as I do it. Oh my gosh, he's using his mouth. My mouse. Oh my gosh, I know I use my mouse a lot. Um, I can't be bothered to to not. But so we're gonna get a. Um, we got our initialized. We got our bits and our ass. Our order books pretty much two dictionaries for buys and sells. And so now uh, we're gonna get. And add order in here as well. So I'm just going to set it to one variable, book, which will be bids if. Can I put the word? Yeah, if side equals to bid, or buy is how I have it, and then um, I'll stop that asks. Uh, you can do it like this because then book will just represent the destination pretty much. So if uh, price in book, then we can say book price with a key, and then the key value pair is price and size, so then we can add whatever size we have. I cannot type today. And then else, we can just say, do you guys do that? Do you guys one line your else's when you can like that? I, I always do. Um, and then we need, and then we want to match the order. So match, match orders. Uh, yeah. And then we want to remove an order. So I'm just gonna copy that because, um, oh my goodness. All right, whatever. Fine. <laughs> I'll type it. Uh, self and then price, size and side again. We gotta get our book variable again. Uh, and so now we're going to say if if price in the book, if we can actually, if we actually have an order to cancel, we're going to get that um, get that size and subtract size from it because we're moving orders. We're not actually really filling them, you know what I mean? Uh, so then, if like we're not keeping track of um, accounts and everything like that. Then you can delete the uh, the key. I like to do it like this because I don't have to have this, these functions don't have to be super long. You know what I mean? I'm even gonna one line that just because I like doing stuff like that. But yeah, I don't have to say like I don't have to say something like if size or side. Excuse me, if side is by self dot bids, and then I have to else and then just the exact same code with self that ass you know what I mean it's just um a bit more concise 
match orders doesn't need any parameters and we're just going to put it into a while loop so so while we have things to match that's why we're not just going to use while true we want to make sure that we actually have stuff to add uh, to, to match that there's actually things there for us because if we were to use a while true we could try that when we have no uh, actual data so we want to get a highest bid which is going to be the highest bid so max and self that bids we can do it like that we don't have to do items or anything like that and then a lowest S is going to be the minimum of self dot s cool and then we're going to say if the highest bid is greater than the lowest ask then the size will be what will it be it'll be whichever one's smaller in the actual thing because we can't match orders that don't exist so we're going to say self dot bids highest bid and then self dot uh, asks lowest ask we're gonna do it like that and then if not that yet we're gonna actually get rid of the size so then we're just gonna say we're just gonna grab that and then say minus equals um, size and then exact same thing but just with uh, the lowest ask I know I'm on Windows I'm using my mouse I'm just the worst. So then we're gonna then we're gonna check. We're basically gonna do um we're gonna do this check right here for for um each I keep on doing that for each um each actual size, right? And so same thing again, I like one lining stuff a lot, but you don't have to if it's more readable for your eyes I just prefer like that and if we don't have or if we can't actually match these orders then we're just gonna then we're just gonna break then we need to get the order book and so how are we gonna do it we're gonna sort the order book so sorted bids and so we have to sort the bids um, in a certain way. So we're going to say sorted uh, self.bids. And then I have to say key. And then I have to give it a lambda. I forgot the syntax for that, I, even though I just wrote it. Uh, yeah, just lambda x. And then I put the colon. And then I have to give it negative x. Index it at zero, and then all of that to self dot um, depth, and then sorted asks is the same thing, but I don't need that key there, and so asks, and I don't need that. Oh, whoops! I don't need uh, that key at all, and I have to say dot items. This is why you have a reference just take a little glances at it you don't gotta you know follow it the whole time but it'll help you a lot in times like that so we're gonna say bids is what is it sorted bids and then asks is sorted asks and put that drawn in quotes there we go that's our order book function done now we're going to hop into our main and I'm going to copy all the imports. So from court, we need court, WebSocket, JSON, and send file. We need async IO, JSON, logging, and our order book file that we just made. Take a sip of water. All right. So we need an app that is a court app. We can just say name. We need... Um, we need clients, we need connected clients. Connected clients, which is gonna be a set, so no one can have more than one connection. Uh, we also need, I'm just going through documentation, we need an order, order book, which is a file dot order book, that actual object that we just made. There we go. And let's give it a logger as well, so logging dot, info 
and then the level oh, okay no it's like like that uh basic config and then the level is logging.info that's how you write that uh, you could capitalize it why not i like capitalizing stuff like that because i like my i like the color scheme if you guys want to know the color scheme it's this um i love it <laughs> i think it's better i think it's way more fun to code when you have a cool color scheme and then i also want to give a constant max connections and just set it to 100 and so now how do we get roots in a quart? Well, just like that, <laughs> just say app.root above whatever function you're going to write. And this is, I can just say index, right? Yeah. And I don't need any parameters. And then I'm just going to return a wait and then uh, send file dot. Oh, I can just call it. And then uh, templates. index.html. Um, this is my file structure. I don't think I showed that at the beginning. Cool. So now, like I said before, this is all async stuff. So a lot of return, I mean, a lot of await, and a lot of, we're going to be using async IO to put things to their own threads at some point. So now we actually have to get an app.websocket, right? and uh, slash ws and we have to put that at sign in the beginning don't forget about that and so yeah now we're gonna have an async function called ws uh, i don't believe it needs anything nope <clears throat> and then so now we're gonna say if the len the length of our connected clients is greater than our max connections we are going to await websocket.send and then we are going to json that dumps an error. Uh, why are we going to do it like that? Because I'm going to say uh, error. <laughs> We're going to say error. And then whatever error is. So max connections. Why not? Um, and then I want to return. I don't want to continue because that we already have too many clients. So now whatever our client is, is a, a WebSocket. Uh, and I think this might be deprecated, but because it has the it has the um, underscore in the beginning, but it still works just fine. Just get current object, and then we're gonna add it to our uh, connected clients. There we go. And then I want to log it. So logging dot info, and then uh, client connected. Cool. And so now I need to try and I'm going to do the finally right now. So I don't forget the finally is basically to, am I tripping with how to do that? Okay. I'm just going to remove it from the connected clients. And then I want to log that. So client, uh, disconnected cool and so now in our try we're actually going to do stuff so as soon as someone connects we want to be able to give them whatever data that we have so I want to be able to send um, JSON dot dumps and then order book dot get order book and that way this will display everything that they need without them having to do an action so and if it's empty it's empty so then we need a while true and our data is going to be whatever we get from our WebSocket. Whatever we get from our WebSocket in the sense of um, whatever the user inputs, right? So this order data is going to be the order that they actually submit. And so it's going to be json.load um, this data. So now the action is going to be gets order data dot get and then action right and so I need action price size side I don't need uh, I do need side yeah yeah because the action we're gonna get to that yep <laughs> um, 
I really hope I trigger so many people by doing it like that. <laughs> so if uh, action is add, what do we want to do? Order book dot add order, and I'm going to give it the price, size, and then side. There we go. I want to check both. Actually, no, I don't have to check both. I can say, I can say LF, uh, and I'm just going to copy that. And then remove order and add order need the same parameters, so I can just leave that. And then else I need to return, well, not return, but I need to, um, I'm actually to put it down here. So, eh, whatever, it really doesn't matter. Um, I need to send an error like I did uh, before. So I'm just going to copy that. Error. Um, unsupported action, why not? And then continue. And then I need an exception. JSON.json decode error right here. And then I want to send another error. I'm going to log it first. JSON load error, and I can just, I'm just going to send that right here as well. Doesn't really matter. Cool. So now I need, um, so now I need two other functions, right? I need a function to actually broadcast the order book to the, um, to every single client, and then I need to periodically do that. So I'm going to have two functions to do that. So uh, async def, we're going to have broadcast order book. It doesn't need anything, and it's not a root. It's just a helper function. So we're going to have order book. It is order book dot get order book. The message is the order book data. So JSON dot dumps. Ah, order book data, there we go. And then the last thing I want to do is for every client. So how do I want to write this? Uh, well, I need to async IO. I need to gather all these things. I need a pointer, so I'm just not going to forget that. And then for client in connected clients, I like to do that so that way I just don't forget anything. And I need to send the message for every client. So client dot send and then that message what did I write incorrectly that's gonna go down there there we go and then I need an async periodic spell that right periodic broadcast it doesn't need anything actually it does it needs an interval Okay. <laughs> uh, interval, zero point one. Why not? And then put a while loop in there, so that way this will always just run on its own thread. This is the beauty of async. I love it. And I want to await broadcasting that order book, and then I want to I want to sleep for whatever the interval is. There we go. Yep. And then if name is equal to main, I need a loop. Async IO dot um, got get event loop. It's a function like that. And then we need to create tax create tasks. So the task is just going to be to periodically broadcast. That is going to be what just gets called, you know what I mean, over and over and over again to make sure that everybody gets um, the most recent data and then specify it for it. It's going to be 5,000. Cool. So that's everything. That's, uh, that's an async order book for you. On our front end, we have some, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go through everything that we have here because there's just a little bit of JavaScript that's just like forms and for each loops. 
So yeah, we got this bit of styling right here, so it doesn't look terrible. We got uh, this order form, which has price and side <laughs> or size, and then depending on if they buy or sell it, that'll be the side. And so then in that we have a little table right here that'll display everything. And we we have the script with a socket that'll connect to it. We have this update order book function. So on every message, the message is the order book data. We have an on error. And then we have this update order book function. So we get um, every bid and ask. And then we for each it just kind of put everything into a column or a row actually in fact. And then we just iterate through. Submit order, pretty much the same thing, but we're just making it actually be in order and then we're sending it over the socket. Uh, went through that super quickly just because it's not really what the video is about. The whole video is really about this. And um, I hope that that was fun and made sense to you guys. So now let's run this. So let's go Python main.py. Why nothing? Um, did I write the... Did I put a little typo in the main? Don't put a pass in. Oh, yep. That's why I didn't put the underscores there. So it's clear. There it is. Yep. <laughs> Little overlooks. Now, if you go, I'll bring this over on this screen for you guys. If you go local, oh my gosh, I can't type. And then if you go to port 5000, because that's what we specified, here's our order book. And if you buy it, nothing happens. Okay, cool. So why did that happen? Let's refresh that then. Oh, it's there. Ooh, that is strange. Why is it? Why is it working like that? Uh, let's go to Firefox and just show you guys how there's another connection. So you can say, oh, leave me alone. <laughs> Not that. Localhost 5000. You can see when you connect, there's that. I don't know why we need to refresh every single time. That should be the whole point is that when we're in there, that happens. I bet I just wrote something wrong in this uh, WebSocket function. I'm not sure what I would have written, would have written wrong. Oh, do you want to know why? We'll get back to that code that we just wrote, but we didn't call the broadcast order book function before we handle this error. That is why. And we need to put that in the try. There we go. So now I'm just going to refresh and then actually I'm just going to get a new, not that one, <laughs> uh, 5000. There it is. And then I'm going to do the same thing for you as well. Local was 5,000. There you are. Bye. Yep. There we go. Now we're working splendid. Let's show you guys the matching. Okay. Well, if you didn't match, that's odd. <laughs> uh, there we go. I don't know why I wouldn't match it at the, um, the same price. Oh, that is odd. It would only do it at 99. Okay, so now let's head back in here. Maybe I made a small issue in our matching function. So let's debug that together. Why don't we? So it would definitely be something in the matching function. So you would have uh, lower than, less than, or equal to. See, you just miss little stuff like that. And so you can see it when, it, when we change that, it disconnected us. So now let's head back over here. And let's get just a new, brand new order book. Because as we load that, it'll uh, disconnect us. So there we are. There's nothing in the order book right now. But if we do that, and then sell. Yep, and that's all gone again. Okay. So let me buy. And then I'll... Um, well, I want to show you in a different way, so let's just buy 10. Why not? And then we're going to say 100 and then 5 or 2, whatever. So 
Did I click buy? Yeah, I must have clicked buy. So then if we say 12, then it'll all get matched and it'll go over there. Perfect. All working great. <laughs> um, thanks for, uh, and we can see that we get our logs for uh, connected and disconnected. So thanks for coding that along with me today. Thank you for bearing with me through the little bit of debugging. It's always fun to debug stuff live. Um, don't ever feel bad about getting things wrong. First try, never happens. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what we made today. WebSocket order book in Python. I actually don't need JSONify. I don't know why that's there. But um, yeah, before you guys head out, be sure to check out my business, the to indicator I made with Lux Algo. And my Twitter accounts, give me some follows on there if you guys want to stay up to date with everything I everything I make. But um, yeah, the code to this will all be in the GitHub. If you guys liked um, videos with this style, I know that I've read the poll. <laughs> you guys wanted a long Python video, so here it is. And uh, super cool stuff with WebSockets and async. I've been using Quart in a project, the actual other local host. And uh, Quart is a great thing to work with, in my opinion. I think it's super just straightforward and... Um, works really well and you could do stuff like this you could just throw things on threads that you want so yeah comment anything else that you guys would want i've had this in the pocket for a little bit i know that one of you guys keeps on commenting about a about a um time series analysis thing i'll look into that but um yeah i had this in the pocket for a while that i wanted to make i always think it's fun to work with websockets and stuff like that so yeah uh, i hope you guys enjoyed the video consider liking and subscribing consider checking out all the other stuff and um yeah, link to this will be in the description. Have a good one.